so you, you guys you might have seen some discarded stuff over here and if you have a workshop you know this is usually the case lots of discarded plywood and stuff like that but for us we usually like to make use of every wood that we have in the workshop and today we're going to make a puzzle out of this scrap wood that you've seen so to start off i've already printed a couple of things so these are the things that i want to create a puzzle out of we have some nice african paintings i've printed it on sticker paper and on top of it i've laminated it with uv so that it's uh, more durable and basically the whole process involves getting this the photos sticking them on the plywood and then just cutting so in case you want to make a puzzle just make sure you don't use wood glue or any uh, liquid glue because it's going to interfere with the laser most laser modules usually have a problem when cutting through uh, wood that has been treated with, with glue so just make sure you don't use any glue on that just go for the sticker paper then apart from that you also want to make sure you're using some good uh, plywood sheets uh, of course really this one will really depend on where you are if you're having some plywood that is not really for craft material just keep in mind that you're going to have to adjust the settings of your laser diode so that it works for for you so you have to test a couple of puzzles before you find the right settings and then from there you can just go on and make your puzzle. So I'll start off by cleaning uh, just removing some dust from these uh, pl plywood sheets so that it just makes it easier for the pictures to stick on it. So I'll clean all of this then after cleaning I'll take one of the photos and this is a sticker paper, so I'll just uh, get it out. Of course, it helps if you have some long nails. So there is the sticker paper. And when you're going to stick it on your plywood, make sure there are no air bubbles that are going to get trapped between the photo and the plywood. So you might need to use something perhaps like a roller or anything like that or just use your good old hands or young hands they're still going to work so this is how i like to stick my thing i'll just come here choose a nice spot then do the first uh make sure the edge is stuck nicely Run your fingers a couple of times to remove any air bubbles and then just from there just go on uh, sticking the, the paper. Make sure you're pressing as you're sticking so that there are no bubbles that are trapped between the sticker and the plywood sheet. So easy does it, easy does it. So there we go, you can just uh, push something over here to remove any air bubbles that you might have. Alright, so there we have our, our plywood sheet with the sticker, I'm just making sure there are no air holes inside. So you might need to check this picture a couple of times and when you're satisfied with that it's time to go and put it on the laser. So for cutting this we're cutting a 3mm plywood. This is not really craft plywood so it's going to need quite a lot of power than the usual craft wood but it will still work because we're using the 20 watts Creality Falcon to cut it. So let's go and cut this puzzle. First, we'll jump on the computer, I'll show you uh, the puzzle pieces, and then we go and start cutting it out. So, this is how the puzzle is going to look like. 
If you guys want the files that make up the puzzle pieces, we'll leave them in the description section. But basically this is how Lightburn sees uh, this file. So first off, it's going to cut it uh, on the outside. And then after that, it's going to cut the inside pieces. And basically that's that. So nothing much. Then of course, you're going to have to tweak your settings depending on the material that you're using as well as your laser. For us, you can see we're going for a speed of 300 and it's going to cut. Of course, you're going to use the air assists because it helps with remo removing any burn marks. And just before you forget, uh, if you're going to use quite a lot of power, you might want to cover your design with something like a masking tape so that the burn marks don't show on top of your sticker paper. And that's something that I forgot to do and I'm just going to do it right now. Okay, let me just remove this. So we have our, is it called a masking tape or something? So we're just going to cover our sticker paper with this masking tape. I usually like going uh, horizontal just because. So you, you can see the design under the masking tape. It's always nice to use uh, a white masking tape or something that is a little bit clear so that you can see where the laser is cutting and in case you have any patterns that need to be on specific areas of your design then you can make sure the board is aligned nicely so that the patterns come out so there we go and now straight just to cutting nothing more so you guys can see my plywood is not laying flat so i'll have to do some adjustments over here to get it to lay flat and then from there we're just going to start cutting it so we're just going to use the masking tape to get the board to lay flat on the honeycomb okay so of course if you have uh, your plywood is quite flat then you don't need to go through this process but if you're having some carved sheets that you want to use to cut the puzzle then it's absolutely critical to ensure that it lays flat on the honeycomb because I've had some uh, poor experience with carved with carved sheets usually when the laser diode is cutting and the sheet is carved the sheet tends to come out and then touches the laser head then some fire sparks start coming out so it's always nice to have flat wooden sheets I think we, we are set we're just going to uh, review the settings again and then get the machine cutting the puzzle so during the design I put two uh, border lines on this puzzle so I just have to delete one because I don't want the laser diode to go twice so if you check here on the corner you're going to see there's this uh, right angle degree border and there's this one that's a little bit looking like 45 degrees so I'll just take this out one I've just selected it then simply press delete on your computer and now it's gone so we ri right now we only have a single line for the machine to cut so everything looks good I think uh, we're just going to set the origin and set the uh, the, the frame of the and, and run the machine so that it gets the frame then we get started so right now we're getting started with running the frame we want to see the work area that the laser diode is going to travel so let's see so we, we will have to adjust the settings a little bit because if you check uh, the frame area the laser diode went past uh, the boundary of our sticker so I'm just going to adjust it a little bit. So usually when I'm running the frame, I want to ensure that the laser diode is inside the picture that it's going to cut. 
I don't want to have any edges that are going to be looking out of place because that's just going to bring more work on my side. So I've ensured that the frame is inside the sticker paper, the sticker photo. Then it's time to get started. There we go. So the puzzle has already been cut, I like the cuts, the cuts are nice and if, 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 if you look closely you can see some burn marks on top and that's why it's very important to use something that is going to prevent the burn marks from showing on your final product. So we used a masking tape, if we hadn't used a masking tape then the burn marks would have been on our, on our photo and that is something that we don't want. So initially I'd set the machine to run only one pass. But then I realized it wasn't cutting through because probably because of the wood and also because the laser head was placed slightly above uh, the work material. Usually you want the laser head to be just about uh, 3 millimeters from the work material so that it cuts nicely. But if you put it a little bit high then it's going to struggle to cut. So when I realized that I decided to when it finished the first round I let it run again. So basically this was two passes and well let's see how it turned out. So I'm just going to remove, remember I, I'd stuck this sheet on, on the honeycomb because it was slightly bended. So let me just remove the fastening. Okay, so you can see it was, <laughs> that was a very very nice cut. <laughs> I was removing the fastening and you can see how it came out. Clean, 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 clean cuts. And here we have our puzzle, just remove a couple of pieces. You can see how the machine cut this, remember this is not even craft wood but it was able to cut it through, it's 3 millimeters, looking a little bit dark because I used lots of power, so for the subsequent puzzles I'm going to reduce the power and lower the laser module so that uh, the distance between it and the work material should be only three millimeters for it to cut nicely. But let me just remove the masking tape and see how the final product lo looks like. <laughs> 